guys okay today we're going to do a video on how to winterproof your z10x okay what you will need you need the size 2.5 all the way to size 4 allen key Phillips head screwdriver you will need grease and lithium grease loctite or thread lockers a spanner to open up your motor okay so without further ado the very first step is to remove the motor and we're going to add grease onto the motor to uh, maintain it, remove rust and also at the same time to prevent moisture for entering the motor that might cause uh, rusting of the manex in the motor. So the very first step is to remove the grip tapes on your 010X. Once that's done, we will remove the deck cover by removing these screws what size are they? okay once you remove the screw now let's remove the top of the deck cover okay, this is pretty tough because we have already done a bit of uh, waterproofing on the front okay there you go this is the cooling silicon pad okay do not throw this away Make sure it stays on the deck cover. Okay, moving on. The very first step to removing the motor. Now we today we're gonna do only one motor. We're gonna remove the two side plastic covers with a Philip head screwdriver. Okay, once we have the screws removed, remove the side plastic covers. Okay, try not to pull it too hard. You might damage uh, the LED wires. Okay, so your object. There you go. Okay, so what he just unplugged is the hall sensor and the face wires. Okay, now moving up to the back on the inside, we have uh, two wire holders. Okay, in previous videos, we have already uh, mentioned this. Next, you will need to remove this nut here and this one here to remove the motor. Okay, let's get the kickstand out of the way. Okay, once you remove that one, the motor can slide out properly. Or, if you are good enough, you don't have to do that. Just make sure you look out for the wires. And there you go, you have the whole motor taken out. And we're going to focus on how to touch up on the inside of the motor. Motor bolts out. I also have taken the liberty of removing the tyres because I might want to change to uh, off-road tyres such as this. It can be found on our website, which is able through our website also. So, firstly, we want to have a firm base to put our motors on. Understand that some of you at home will not have what we have. You can use your used tyres, alright? Just stack them, two or three, doesn't matter. Alright, as such, I'll show you. Put them here on the floor, on a chair, elevated as such. It works the same way. 
and now we will go into opening the motor itself and to reveal what's inside okay once you remove all your chop screws six aside make sure you keep them in a safe place because we're gonna reuse them again when we close it back and now we're gonna remove the hub the stator from the hub all right okay this process will require a bit of strength right a bit of force so uh, just bear with me and uh, when you're doing it uh, don't be shy just exert a bit of force on the motors okay give yourself a flat base the floor is good but uh, I'm gonna test the strength of this chair all right okay the part where the face wire and the hall wires are and the part without it all right so what you're gonna do the motion is this way that means this is going up and this is going in so what you're gonna do you're gonna knock see like opening a can of sardines just that it's not sardines inside all right okay a lot of uh, users will also uh, be wondering by knocking this on a hard surface will it damage the thread yes and no so what we're gonna do is that I can show you a uh, user uh, uh, uh. okay some of the users my my experience that uh, when you knock on a hard surface especially on the floor the thread might be damaged okay so what I'm gonna show you is that I'm gonna put a nut through and I'm gonna knock it with the nut protecting the sub here Okay, the M chop by 125 nut. How are we gonna do this? It's actually very simple. Thread this through with your finger without any tool. So you'll know that the, the threads are not broken. So not fully in from here. Do the same thing. From here, get yourself a body to help out okay. okay one of the half is open you can go ahead and take it out and you'll see the stator we need to extract the other half by the same way and have a friend to pull the stator up especially careful all right fingers off the magnets else the stator will snap back into the in place and you hurt yourself must be extra careful on this step fingers away this way right okay so you reveal your magnets right for used motors you will also experience some rust all right this is a good time to do some maintenance all right for your stator itself used Motors will also have some rust here. Then again, another general maintenance for you. Okay, this general maintenance also serves its purpose in a way where it, uh, it is also, uh, you know, protect your motors, coat your motors, and 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 uh, in a way, uh, waterproofing and future proofing. Okay, so then again, this video is also not only for the winter guys; it's also for the tropical guys, which like us always hot always wet okay so what we're gonna apply here is some uh, light grease all right when I say light grease it means the grease must be light so you're just gonna use your hand and wipe it down like you know you're wiping your you know, your face or anything it's the same thing a very light coating on with a light grease okay as such apply generously but lightly very thin layer all right one round likewise on this okay same thing light grease All the way around 
all the way around it, circumference of it, through the 30 poles of magnets that you see here. And then we'll be covering back the motor and we'll show you a different kind of substance to put to seal it up. Okay, moving on. We'll be closing everything back up. Okay, so we need to have uh, lithium grease for this application. Alright, there's many brands out there. These are some of the brands that we use. Generally, lithium grease is red. Looks like strawberry jam and stuff. Trust me, it's not strawberry jam. So what you're going to do? Right, same thing, application is on your finger. See this bezel? Alright, you're going to wipe one round, half a round at first. Take another one. Complete the whole round. And you can go ahead and apply generously on this. No issues. It's okay if the grease goes into the screw holes. Likewise, the other side. Half round first, generously. The other half round. Beautiful. Okay, moving on. We will be putting back everything together. These are the three items. And okay, you have to notice uh, this is this part is protruding and this part isn't. Okay, so which way? So what we're gonna do, alright, get this out of the way first. Okay, the protruding part or the longer part as you can see over here in this video will be where the stator is going in. Alright, I repeat, the protruding part will be where the stator is going in. Okay, then again, you might want to be careful on this. Have a friend to help you hold. Fingers away from the bezel. So what I'm going to do is this method. Align it and it will snap in as such. And where did our other cover go? Here it is. All the way in. Okay. So what we're going to do on this part is that we're going to mallet back in while at the same point of time we have to align the screw holes to match so that you don't have issues after alignment okay mallet nice knocks same thing Turn it around first. Ah, there are the screw holes. Double check. Are they the screw holes? Yes, they are. Okay, knock. Very nice. Now, all your screws are ready to go back into the motors. Alright, okay. For this part, you might want to use thread locker. Okay, thread locker for all your six half, six half total chop. I'm gonna use three bond. Check them out, they are a good brand. Application is just a teeny weeny little bit like this, just like that. Can you see? Hold on, let me. Can you see that? It's just a little bit. Okay, 
this is the part where some of you guys will be frustrated because oh no I can't align them did I do it correctly so okay what you're gonna do is that if you followed my instructions on how to align the holes before knocking in well generally you don't have any issues so I'm gonna do three screws first make sure the screws bite the thread very nice take a size 4 allen key and screw them in and do the same for the other sides do it alternate one two three like a triangle and the other triangle and repeat the same step on the other side triangle and the other triangle go screw 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 And don't worry about your motors being oily and such. You're gonna have to wipe it down later after this. Okay. I'm just gonna fast forward it for you guys. Alright. I'm just gonna emulate what happens if you do not get the alignment straight. Alright, this is very, very crucial. In any case where some of us might want to just force it in no you don't force it in all right so what you're gonna do say for example oh no my screws are stuck what am i gonna do can't go in so what you're gonna do take the magic mallet your mallet knock so this becomes Loose like this, you can actually turn it. And then, what we're gonna do, align it again. Okay, pro tip. Use a smaller Allen key, doesn't matter the size. Feel it, oh, okay. Yes, I got three holes out of six, four, five, and bingo. I got all six holes aligned. Then I can carry on screwing it in. As you can see, I'm not using any force. Gentle hands, gentle hands. Okay. So, once you have all three screws in first, alright, do not tighten it yet. For those who have issues with realignment, just now you knocked it out, right? You're gonna have to do the same thing. Align it first. And give it a nice tap. Hold on, let me get my screws in first. Okay, the screws are aligned. Okay, so what I'm gonna do tap, tap, tap. Very nice. Align. And the rest of the screw can just go in place. Fast forwarding, fast forwarding. We're gonna put back our new tires, alright? After the new tires are in, make sure you put your tires in first before your rotors. Let's say, for example, you have a rotor spacer, put your rotor spacers in first, then your rotors. It's a good time for you to change your rotors, can go ahead, alright? And we're gonna repeat this step for the front motor, it's just another repeat. You can just look back on the video. And uh, that's the conclusion of how to actually weatherproof or tire it's basically the same thing as every other changing tire videos but over this video we're going to show you how effective the off-road tire will be for window condition Okay. Common mistake while replacing tube and tire is that uh, 
a lot of users forget to release the air pressure from the tire first before they remove the rim that will actually cause a fracture in the rim when they remove the screws there you go this is the 52 volt motor rim there you go all right okay once you use you can use back the previous tube in your tire or you can get new tubes just in case place the tube inside the tire fit the tire back in okay you will notice that if you're going to place the rim back on directly you see all these parts if it gets in between the two rims you'll get pinched and you will have a punctured tube so what you will have to do is to ensure that you release enough air pressure for the tube to sit nicely inside and if you want to be safe what you can do you can add a bit of tire foam to make sure that the tube slide out when the two rings touch Okay, make sure it aligns sits in nicely okay so once you re reach this stage you can get someone to press it down and you screw it back in or the other trick is to get longer screws to guide the other screws in so same thing put the three screws on the three corners which is um, the alternate position okay from here you can get the original screws and start putting them back okay. after that take out the three longer screws There you go. And next step is to pump up the tire. And we'll do the installation of the tire motor back into the scooter. Okay, so once the motor is pumped up, our tires are pumped up, you have to pull back the rotor, pull back in the screws. And for these screws, remember to add in the tread lockers. Right. Okay. So once this this part is done, you're gonna fit the motor 
back into the scooter. Okay, to fit the motor back in, remember, this washer, same for both sides. This one has to be on the inside, while the washer with the hook must be on the outside. Okay, now fitting back the motor, do take note a few things. Number one, the washer on the inside has to stay there. Same for the other side, the washer with the hook will have to be on the outside. Okay, wow, we are on it. Let me help Farhan a bit. There we go, it's backed in. So this one, we have to put the washer with the hook here. And then the nut. Same thing for the other side. And make sure you tighten the motor. If you have to, you will have to adjust the brake caliper here for the alignment and also tighten this side. Once the motor is back in, you have to adjust the motor wire going through here under the mark guard on top of the suspension shaft at the bottom here all the way to the front okay. If you notice there's a spring here this is actually to protect the wire from getting cut from the plastic cover here okay. So the very first thing we should do is to put the wires back into the wire clip So basically, to put the wire back into the wire clip, make sure it gets in place. Let's give Mr. Han some light. There you go, the second one is in. And the last one. And once you have that done, you moved on to putting the wire back into the side deck of the 10X. Okay, so to put the face wire and the hall sensor connector back into the side deck, what you will have to do is to push the front in first. Receive it from the other end. Putting back the side, the rear plastic cover, ensuring that this metal portion is there to protect the wire. Okay. Connect back the face wire, which is this one here, and then the hall sensor wire, and there you go. Now is do some wire management. Cover back the front plastic cover. Once that's done, cover back the deck. Make sure. Make sure the wires are all arranged properly and the scooter is ready. Okay, now talk about the battery itself. 
let's say you're going to store your scooter for the winter you're not going to ride it for the next um, few weeks what you want to do is charge the battery up to 80 percent charge the battery up to 80 percent okay store it between 80 to 50 percent do not let it fall below 20 percent and do not store it at full charge and that's all and you're ready to go thank you guys for watching see you in the next video